In a prior video, I've talked about how you could handle imbalanced data set in Python using the imbalanced learn library. And in this video, we're going to take it a step further. We're going to take the balanced data set, and then we're also going to use that to build a machine learning model. And then we're also going to implement another feature of scikit-learn that will allow you to use the class weight instead of performing data balancing. And the class weight will essentially assign a weight value that will be inversely proportional to the frequency that will be inversely proportional to the number of samples in each of the majority and minority class. And so let's dive in. Let's fire up the Google Colab or the Jupyter Notebook. And I'll provide you this in the video description. So check out the link and then you could open this up. And then the first thing that we want to do here is we're going to install the imbalance learn library. So go ahead and run the cell and this should take you a short moment. And apparently it is already installed. And now let's read in the data set. And the data set that we're using today is the hepatitis C virus classification data set. And so this data set was already published in one of the research article in our research group. And so we're gonna use pandas by importing pandas as pd. And then we're going to use the pd.readcsv function to read in the data and assign it to the df variable. Let's run the cell. And then you're gonna notice here that we have 578 rows and 882 columns. And then the last column will be the y variable, which is the activity. Therefore, we're going to split it into the x and the y variables. So the y variable will be the last column and the remaining columns here will be the x variable. So we do this by selecting the activity column and then assigning it to y and then we're going to drop only the activity column and then assigning it to x whereby we're assigning axis equals to one where one will signify that we're working with columns because if axis is equal to zero it means that we're working with the rows. All right, and so let's go ahead and take a look at the class distribution. So the class distribution will allow us to look at the number of actives and the number of inactives for the activity of the compound data set. And so active will mean that the compound or molecule will have favorable activity, whereas inactive will mean that the compound has unfavorable activity. And so let's run the cell here in order to perform a value count. Oh, but then we have to first run this cell here in order to perform the data splits. And now let's perform the value count on the Y variable. And so now we're going to perform the value count whereby we're going to count the number of actives and the number of inactives. And here we can see that there are 412 actives and 166 inactive compounds. And now we're going to translate this into a pie plot. And so let's run it. And so note here that we're using the inbuilt function of pandas in order to perform the pie plot making. And if you're going to use matplotlib directly, you could do this as well. So you're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then you're going to assign fig1 xs1 into the plt.subplot. And then we're going to make the plot. Okay, so let's run it. And roughly you're going to get this similar image. Okay, and so the %.2f here will give us the text in two digits, and then we're labeling actives and inactives for here. And the label comes from the activity count.index, which is a list. So let me show you. So it is the list here, active and inactive, which are the labels. All right, and now we're going to perform the data split before we perform the data balancing. And so we're going to take this imbalanced data set. We're going to split it using the ratio of 80 and 20. And then we're going to use the training set to perform the data balancing. And then we're going to use the balanced data set to build a model. And then we're going to apply the model to make prediction on the test set, which we have left out at the beginning. All right, and so let's do it. And now we have split the data into the X train, X test, Y train, Y test. And now let's take a look at the shape or the dimension of the data. So here we can see that there are 462 rows because we have already performed the data split using 80-20 ratio. So from 500 right here, let's see how many we have originally. 578 rows. So 80% of that would be here, 462. And then the 20% will be for the test set, which has 116 compounds. Okay, and so let's make a pie chart of that. So you can see that the imbalance is still shown here. 
and let's have a look at the value counts. And so we have 330 and 132. So they're roughly two and a half times more for the majority class, which is the active compounds. And then the minority class is the inactive compounds with 132. All right, and here we're going to perform two types of class balancing using the imbalance learn library. And so for the first type, we're going to perform the random undersampling, whereby the majority class will be reduced so that it contains the same number of compounds of the minority class. So for an in-depth explanation of this, I recommend to check out this particular video. And so I'll provide you the link to it. And so we're here going to run the cell here. And now you can see that it performs the data balancing. And now we have equal number of compounds in the active and inactive. So they're 50%, 50%. take a look at the actual value. And so now we have 132 and 132. So you can see here that the, and so here you can see that the majority class active has 330. And so we're going to reduce that into 132 right here. And now for oversampling, we're going to increase 132 to become 330. And so that the final number will be 330 for both classes. So let's perform it. Uh, I mean, this one, oversampling. All right. And so they're both equal now. And let's have a look at the value count. Okay. Let's see. Did I do something wrong? Oh, okay. I have to change this to extreme. All right. So this is extreme. All right. Okay, train. Okay, so I forgot to put underscore train here. So before it was X and Y, and now I added underscore train and underscore train here. Okay, so let's run it again. All right, and so both classes are equal now, and let's take a look at the value count. All right, so as expected, the inactive compounds was increased so that it becomes 330, so that it becomes the same number as that of the majority class. All right, and so now we have balanced data set for the oversampling. All right, and so here we're going to perform model building using the various balanced or imbalanced data sets. So for here, we're going to have four models. So the first model will be without class balancing. And so the second model will be with undersampled balanced class. So here we perform class balancing using the random undersampling. And the third model here, we're performing the oversampling. And the fourth model, we're using the class weight option here in scikit-learn. So we specify it inside the random forest classifier to have class weight equal to balanced. All right, so let's take a look at the code for model building. And so this block of code here will perform the random forest model building. And so we're assigning the random forest classifier to the model variable. And then we're training the model using model.fit. And then the input data will be X train and Y train. And so make note here that this is the imbalanced data set. Okay, and so the other ones here will use the balanced data set from undersampling for model two. And for model three, we're using the oversampling which has been class balanced. And in model four, we're also using the imbalanced data set, but then we're using the class weight equals to balance. Okay. So after we specify model training and the model is already trained here, we're now going to perform the cross validation models as well. So here we're instantiating the random force classifier again also using random state equals 242. And then we're assigning it to the model CV variable. And on this line, we're specifying a custom scoring function. And here we're going to use the make scorer function. And then as input argument, we're using the Matthews correlation coefficient or the MCC. And so the reason for using MCC is because it's a great metric for imbalanced data sets because it considers all of the true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative. So the four TP, TN, FP, FN. Whereas other equations from accuracy or sensitivity or specificity, they're looking at the positive or the negative classes or the number of correct predictions versus the total. But then for Matthews correlation coefficient, it considers all of the terms in the same equation. And so even if there's imbalanced data set, this particular metric is pretty robust. 
And so here we're specifying the CV scoring to be scoring. And so for here, we're specifying the CV scoring variable for the option scoring. And we're going to perform five-fold cross-validation. And the data here, as you could see, because we're not performing any form of class balancing, we're using the imbalanced data sets. And now we're using the cross-validate function to build the cross-validation model. And so after both models have been built with model.fit and with cross-validate function for the cross-validation, we're going to perform the calculation of the model's performance using Matthew's correlation coefficients. And so we're making predictions using model.predict. So the model here has already been trained. And then we apply the model to make a prediction. As input argument, we're using xtrain and also xtest. And then we're assigning it back to the y variable here, ytrainpred and ytestpred. And so these are the prediction variables. So we put in x and we get y. We put in x from the test set and we get y prediction. And here we're calculating the MCC. Input argument would be the Y train and the Y train pred and the Y test and the Y test pred. And because the cross validate function here, we already specify the MCC using our custom function. Therefore, we could just calculate the average from the cross validation results. Because we have here five fold, we have a list of five values. And so we're going to calculate the mean of that. And here we're going to combine all of the results from MCC train variable, MCC test variable, MCC CV variable, and we're going to create a summary data frame. Okay, and so let's build the model. All right, and so the summary data frame looks like this. Okay, so we have the MCC training and then the corresponding value, the MCC CV and the corresponding value, MCC test and the corresponding value, and the second column. And the first column is the name of the train, CV, and test sets. All right, and so let's perform the same random undersampled balanced class model building. And so the explanation is the same as mentioned earlier on with just modification to the training sets here using the undersampled data. And so here you can see that the performance deteriorated a bit. And so let's see. Yeah, so from 75 and 72 for the CVN tests, it decreased to 68 and 71. Okay, so let's see how this oversample data set performs. All right, and so the MCC CV increased and the MCC test set increased slightly to 76. Originally, it was 72. And so the CV increased, okay, for the oversampling. And let's take a look at the class weights. And so make note here that we use the class weight equals to balanced for the random forest classifier for both the training model and for the cross validation model. So the test set deteriorated a bit and the CV increased slightly, okay? So you can see here that without any form of data balancing, the model performance was reasonably good. And with balanced data sets, it appears that the oversampled data set provided the best performance. And so let's have a look at the summary, all of it together. Instead of having to move up and down for various table, we're going to create a summary table. So one table to rule them all here. And then let's see. Yeah, so as mentioned already, the balanced data set using oversampling provided the best performance because the CV increased significantly from 0.75 to 0.9. And the test set, it also increased from 0.72 to 0.76. And so we could also convert this particular data frame into a latex format. And so here, let's have a look. So it's in the summary table, like here, and then we could, you know, copy it. So this was from a prior run. And then I'll paste it in here. This is on Overleaf for a manuscript that I will work on soon. And so this is a template provided by Overleaf. And so let's recompile it again. And so here you can see that the table looks pretty good, right? So all of the code here for the table, the formatting, has already been performed right inside Pandas. Okay, so let's close the window here. Let's proceed further. And so here we're going to make a polar plot in order to visualize the results here. And so here we're using the note class balancing data. 
And so let's run it and let's have a look at the polar plot that we're creating. Here you go. And so this is a polar plot. So each slice that you see here corresponds to the training sets in pink color. Green is the cross validation set and the cyan color is the test set. And so we make use of NumPy and we use the matplotlib. And here we specify the data frame to be the first row from the summary table right here, the first row. We're using the iLock function. And then here we're specifying the length of the data. So how many we have here? We have three. So this is going to be n equals three. And then the three will be reflected here. So we have three slices here. All right. And so this will tell that we're using a single plot and then the bars and the x-axis set ticks will be specifying the different formatting of the plots. So the bar function is used to perform the plots. And so the input argument are theta and radii. Let's have a look at theta and radii. And how about radii? So radii comes from the results of the MCC values. And so it's relatively the weight here. So training has a value of one. So it has the height of one and CV and test has roughly 0.75 and 0.72 height. So you can see that it's approaching 0 0.8 radial or radius. So each circular radius will be the tick. So we have here 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and 1.0 in here. And here we specify the custom function to be red, green, and cyan. So they're right here. And so the color scheme was inspired from ggplot2. And in this particular for loop, we'll set the edge color of each of the slice to be black. And it's going to set the alpha transparency of the fill color. So here we set it to 0 0.7. We can make it 0 0.3 and we'll see what happens. And so you can see that the color became lighter. Or we can make it one even so it's going to be not translucent okay so let's make it how about 0 0.8 like before okay and this will make use of the color of the custom function okay and here we specify the legends that you see here if you don't want it you could take it out and then the legend box will be gone okay and here we set the title which is right here on top of the plot and we're using tight layout so that when we save it out as a pdf file the white space will be to a minimal and so this is the polar plot of the no class balance data and so in the following code cell we're going to take the same code and then we're going to convert it into a function right here we're creating a custom function called make polar plot and then we're going to accept two input argument which is the data and the plot label and so the plot label will be the title that you see at the top here no class balancing and so i'm going to create the same plot four times and therefore it's better that i create a custom function and so the only thing that it will be different is the input data and the plot label okay and so let's run it and then to make use of the custom function, we specify the name of the function, make polar plot, and then we specify the data input. So you're going to notice here that for the no class balancing, it is the first row class balancing with undersampling. It is the second row with oversampling. It's the third row with class weights. It is the fourth row. And then the labels or the title of the plot we have here, no class balancing, class balancing undersampling, class balancing oversampling, class balancing class weight. And so let's run it. Let's run it. All right. Let's run it. And let's, okay. And so here you can see the relative performance of each of the slices here for the no balancing. And if we perform undersampling, you're going to see that they're roughly the same, right? Nothing is noticeably different. However, for oversampling, we could see that the green here, or let's see which one it is. The green would be the CV. Okay, so the cross validation increased significantly, whereas the test set also increased, right? Because it is approaching the 0 0.8 circle here. And for the class weight, it increased a bit, right? Did it? No, it's roughly the same, right? Okay, and so here we're going to make a zip file of everything and then zip it up and then download it into our computer. And so a moment earlier on, I created a combined version here, but it was using another data. And so here you're going to see that it is quite different from the one we have made. And so different data sets. And so the performance, as you can see, we could see it at a glance comparing all of them at the same time, right? So it makes us aware of the model performance for each of the training sets, CV set or test set, which one performed better, right? 
So for this, the oversampling also performed better, right? And so if you're finding value in the video, please support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, and also hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.